Hello and welcome back to Wolf vs. Ponies, and this is going to be my final day in the human world, as the portal seems like it's about to close soon. So, this is actually the second part to a larger review that I was trying to do with Rainbow Rocks, leading into what I'm doing here, but instead I decided to have a small change of plans. In this video, instead of doing both Rainbow Rocks and the trailer breakdown for the third movie, I will be doing the trailer, break the trailer breakdown of the third Equestria Girls movie, alongside a breakdown of the animatics that were released for Season 5, Episode 24. And I'm talking about both of them. Even though one of them is a song, it may not fit into the plot, but I actually have an interesting idea about it. So, let us begin with the, let us begin with the third movie. Everyone knows it as the Friendship Games. So, as we see, Crystal... This is a sort of school rivalry hug. I hate when these plots are used. Yet bring in another school that happens to be the rival of the main school. So yeah, instead of it being something like oh I don't know changelings like in from wasteland high or something, we get Crystal Prep Academy, a school that is far much more better than Canterlot High School. Why? Probably because it's a private school that has a lot of government funding. So, and who, and also, at first when I saw this, I'm like, oh, okay, I wonder who the principal is. A lot of people first come up with Cadence, and for all those who said Cadence, you were right. Sadly. I did not want to see Cadence as the principal. Okay, she is my favorite, pr she is my number one favorite princess of the four. I did not want to see her as the principal of Crystal Prep Academy. Okay, I really didn't. It would have been a lot more interesting if Sombra was the principal, but no, because men are a minority in Equestria, we have to go with Cadence. How she and Twilight have their relationship is going to be even more interesting, because in the Pony universe, we always see them as, well, now they're sister-in-laws, but we also saw them as great friends with their Ladybug song or whatever. So we get that, and when they're meeting up for what the or for the pre-game ceremony is what I'm getting from it. Twilight runs into Pinkie Pie. Now, since this is the human Twilight, she doesn't know any of the she doesn't know any of Pony Twilight's friends. So of course, Pinkie Pie is the one to introduce herself to her and tells her that she reminds her of the other Twilight. So. Human Twilight probably gets some thoughts about that, like, oh, okay, so I can probably fit in with these five girls. And then for some reason, we get a stare-down scene between Sunset Shimmer and Human Twilight. So, is their rivalry going to come back? That raises a lot of questions, because she actually became great friends with Twilight. Or is it because this is a different Twilight, the whole world and all the law and all the friendship she had with the, first with the other Twilight means nothing, and now it's back to a rivalry? Could be. Also, we see that Human Twilight stumbles upon two surges of magic. The first one is inside what appears to be a trunk, and it is my home, the Everfree Forest. Although it's deeper than where I'm usually at, the Everfree Forest being shown in the human world through like a sort of rip in the space-time continuum is actually very interesting. How that's going to fit into the plot is also going to be very interesting with the two theories I came up with. However, we see, however, in two different scenes where we see them rooting for their teams, the Shadow Bolts, which makes no sense at all. It's Crystal Prep Academy, run by Cadence, and the, their mascot is the Shadow Bolt. The Shadow Bolt was used by Princess Luna slash Nightmare Moon, so wouldn't it be something more crystally? And if it was the Shadow Bolt, then they should have used Sombra because both of them are evil. I mean... They really didn't get their plot straight here. So, yeah, I'm not sure how this movie's going to play out now. But, on the Wonder Colts t side, we have the human main six. Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, Applejack, and Sunset Shimmer, my favorite of them. However, we also see Muffins, Lyra, Bon Bon, and Flash Sentry. Oh boy, Flash Sentry, the guitarist who can play guitar without an amp and who's also a dick in the second movie, is coming back. So, Fluttershy is apparently on the archery team. Is it archery or is it biathlon? I know biathlon is with skiing, but they're running and doing like f 
aileron rolls or whatever. However, on the Wonder Colts, or on the Shadow Bolts team, we actually see quite a bit of characters that ha we've already seen before, but only humans. We see Fluffy Cloud, or one of, the, or the a diplomat that was in the episode Princess Spike. However, there are also two ponies that we've seen before. Sadly, I don't know their names, so I'm just going to address them as the first two ponies we already met in Canterlot. You know, the ones with the sweaters, as like scarfs. Rar Rarity's fashion rival, Suri, is on their team. Trender Hooves is with them. And also in the second trailer we see Twilight walk past Fleur de, Fleur de Lis, or Flower of the Lily. The one who at first I thought was a prostitute for whatever that guy's name was that Rarity became friends with in, the, in her episode when she went to Canterlot. So I don't remember a whole lot of the episodes, and because it's a rarity episode, that means I don't remember it even more. However, we still don't know who the teacher is. We see the teacher at one in one frame where Twilight is holding whatever her necklace is, powered by magic, and like she gets absorbed by it. But she doesn't look like anybody we've seen before. So whoever this teacher is, she's probably not going to play a prominent role since we haven't seen any other teachers other than Cheerilee. So, also at the beginning of the second trailer, so I forgot to talk about the second trailer that was released. So yeah, Cadence is the principal, I already went over that. And Twilight, the human, the real human Twilight, goes to the school to investigate the portal, but is stopped by Sunset Shimmer. And as Sunset tries to track her down, she wants to, she wants to figure out who she was, and of course is unmasked as Twilight. However, it was given away because of her skin color with her hand. So, we also learn that Human Twilight is a loser, and has no friends other than Sugarcoat, who doesn't appear to acknowledge her, or want to acknowledge her. So, from these two anima- or not, from these two trailers, I came up with two theories. One, the leftover magic is going to create an even larger disaster than before, and possibly lead to the collapse of the human world, but only the human world. Now, that is possible. But I, that seems pretty dark, and also, something like that is going to be a lot longer than 1 minute and 17 minutes long. So, this might work better with my second theory that came up. The two worlds will collide and become one world. However, that also seems a bit flawed, because, well, you'll have humans in Equestria, which was only existent in the first generation. Which, this is an entirely new generation, as I went over in a different video, how these are all different universes. So, well, however the movie ends out, these two theories may not be true, but they also could be. So, let us move aside from the movie, and go into the Season 5, Episode 24, Animatics. So, I'll start off with, of course, the first one, where we see Twilight is giving some sort of lecture about... What would happen if the Sonic Green Boom never happened? And yeah, I know Dr. Wolf made a video on it, and I actually saw it before recording this. So, um, yeah. However, this could also lead into a lo much larger thing. But first off, we. S but first off, let me continue. Starlight Glimmer is seen in the crowd, and as Twilight wants to, and as Twilight scans over her, she realizes that she just saw Starlight, or possibly did. So she looks around, and she doesn't s see her. So she lays that fear to rest for mo the moment until she tells Spike about it, who at first lays it to rest, saying that, okay, well, it can't be her since, you know, we don't know where she is. And then when they re enter the castle, we see Starlet there, and the animatic ends with her sitting in her throne, then moving onto the table and about to use her magic. Now, what she's going to use the magic for is going to be interesting, because if she's going to take the cutie mark, she doesn't have a jar, plus she's inside of Ponyville, the hometown of the Princess of Friendship, so there's obviously no way she's going to get out easily. However, Starlight's return was, show was foreshadowed before. In the end of the second part of the cutie map, she ran away into the caves, and yeah, we didn't, we didn't see her for a long time. However, she reappeared in the background of Amending Fences at the restaurant. 
At first, I didn't notice it until Jerry Pete pointed it out in one of his videos, and then I saw other people point it out. So, yeah, it's very interesting that she's stalking Twilight. Is she still going to try to steal her cutie mark? Don't know about that. However, it was also foreshadowed at the end of the second cutie, at the second part of the of the cutie map, when the when the main six is cutie marks flash. They think it's oh quest complete. We solved the problem. However, if you remember in the Griffin Stone episode, Pinkie Pie and Dash's cutie marks are really Pinkie Pies. They f their cutie marks flashed because a new quest appeared. So instead of it being quest complete. It's really a much larger quest that they have just created for themselves. They have unleashed a larger danger than before. So yeah, good job, Main Six. You in you inadvertently create something much bigger. So Doctor Wolf's theories was that Starlight Glimmer might go might go back in time to stop the Rain Boom, which is why she was at her lecture. She wants to figure out what caused them so that she can stop them and nothing will get in her way. Unless she runs into Princess Celestia, then that's a whole another story. But yeah, if Dr. Wolf is right, this could lead to a pretty good two-part episode of 23 and 24. And, it, and, I mean, yeah, time travel episodes, we've only seen one, and it's about time. But we've gotten a whole lot of movies talking about the detrimental effects it has on the entire world on a small to global scale scale. Heck, even in literature, it's a pretty small to lar to a much larger scale of what happens when you mess around with time. So, if Dr. Wolf is right, what would Starlight do? Well, she would need to stop the sonic rain boom, but how would she be able to do that? I mean, sure, she studied magic, but does she really know the spell to create wings, fly up to clouds, do, and then somehow stop Rainbow Dash? Also, how would you stop her? Just, like, shoot a laser at her? Remove the non-existent mark? I mean, we still don't know what she could do. Or, she might just stop Twilight from gaining her mark instead. You know, try to become one of the judges of the panel to allow Twilight accept being accepted into the school for gifted unicorns. So, by doing that, she, would f she could possibly fail Twilight, and thus, they might actually agree. The other judges might agree with her, and then she wouldn't be accepted, and she might not become the child prodigy she was underneath Celestia guys. However, I feel like that is—I feel like that isn't what's going to happen. If Doctor Wolf is wrong, which I feel like that is more correct, the two-part episode would be very interesting, and it might not even be a two-part; might actually just be a one-part episode. So, I mean, because. You can only you can only time travel once, and it only works for a couple of minutes, as explained by Pinkie Pie, when they broke into the library of Star Wars World. The beer did. However, going back to if Doctor Wolf's theory is right, this leads me to how the two animatics are connected. The Leah Hall character, which might possibly be the rumored new character Orchid Blossom, we see her singing in front of a large group and in the group we see four main characters or f four well-known characters we see the three cmc characters sweet well scootaloo and apple bloom singing along with leah hall then we see applejack crying on the outside oh yeah she cries on the inside i'm glad to see all the writing staff remembers that so yeah however what is the relationship between leah hall's character and applejack is another thing because she isn't a family member because her cutie mark is of singing, which all of Applejack's family has to do with apples. So, Leah Hall might... I had two theories about this. The first one I would talk about, which is a more basic theory of it. Maybe Leah Hall's character somehow meets Starlight Glimmer, either in the past, present, or future. She actually accepts the philosophy, and, and, and she gets her mark taken from her, but she doesn't turn into the equalist like how the others did the first time because especially in especially in the lyrics I want to get the clues so clearly there is another character 
influencing her. So it could be Starlight Glimmer trying to uh, trying to force her ideology on her, and Leah Hall isn't buying into it, and so she has to team up with the main six or something like that. However, the other theory I came up with is a much more interesting one, I'd say. If Twilight defeats Starlight Glimmer by traveling back in time to stop Starlight from stopping the rain boom and then having all of them meet together like Dr. Wolf said, maybe Leah Hall's character is Starlight Glimmer but of a different kind of timeline slash world. Maybe she, it, maybe this is the Starlight Glimmer that isn't evil, the one that was good and instead that they are like two they are two-faced one is good the other is evil but the evil one was more prominent and thus thus this one was kept in the shadows who knows I mean the finale and the movie are looking pretty good and I can't wait for more trailers or animatics if in fact they come out so I also like to hear about what you have like what are your ideas about the animatics and the trailers are they connected with the other one are they not connected what do you think the movie will be like, and what do you think the finale will be like? I want to hear more about that one in the comments. I have been Wolf, and I will, and in the next video, I will be back into the Everfree Forest. Bye bye